All right, let's get started. So hello again, everybody, wherever you are. Um, welcome to the 2021 Gem Pharmatech webinar series for June. Um, marked by the summer solstice, which was on the 20th of June. It is already hot and humid where I am. And I hope you will have a pleasant weather to enjoy after the webinar, wherever you are. For today's webinar, uh, we have invited um, the CEO of Gem Pharmatech US, Dr. Mark Moore, to join us, who will share an introductory presentation of the company and his vision in leading GPT going forward. As a brief intro to Mark, Dr. Moore completed his undergraduate study as a biochemistry major at Princeton University and received his PhD in molecular biology and immunology from Brandeis University. Shortly afterwards, he embarked on his journey of entrepreneurship, first as a senior scientist at Genentech, and then as CEO co-founder at Deltagen. Following these milestones, Dr. Moore played a major role in the NIH initiative, the Knockout Mouse Project, KOMP, and served as executive director for the International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium, IMPC. For anyone in the field of genetically engineered mouse models, whether as a user or a model provider from academia or industry, both KOMP and IMPC are familiar names. Before joining Gem Pharmatech, Dr. Moore was CEO at Left Edit and Glia Logics. Without further ado, welcome, Mark. The stage is yours. Uh, thank you, Ying. I appreciate the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here speaking with everyone. Um, kind of odd, we did notice we had several hundred people registered to, from Germany, but for some reason, they're not on the call right now. And uh, my dear colleague, Pradeep, I believe is the only Englishman not in a pub. So uh, my apologies to any of you who don't follow soccer and my deepest apologies to my colleague, Jan, who's on the call, who's German. So please forgive the joke, Jan. Uh, <laughs> so welcome to Gem Pharmatech. I'm, I'm delighted to tell you more about the company and a bit, and I will share my screen and start a, a brief presentation. So what I wanted to do is give those of you who are joining just a brief uh, introduction to not just Jim Pharmatech, but also a, a brief history of the, of the vision of genetically engineered mouse models and where it has started and, and where it's quite exciting to where it has progressed today. And again, I'm sure many of you uh, obviously on this call have been working with mouse models, but one thing that I, I had to do in my role with the Knockout Mouse Project and the IMPC is to tell many people from politicians, legislators, to lay people the importance of animal research and particularly genetically engineered mouse models. And in fact, one key note of this is that the vast majority of Nobel prizes in physiology and medicine have utilized animal models. In fact, over 222 award recipients have received those. So I think that's part of my messaging to show that animal models clearly have played an instrumental role in furthering medical research, physiology, and improving the therapeutic treatments we have for people going forward. But quite honestly, I believe this has just been the beginning because with new technologies, these models are only getting better. Going back in time circa 2005, shortly after the human genome was sequenced and the mouse genome, which by the way, had almost an equivalent level of investment, by the US NIH to complete uh, within two years of the Human Genome Project. Uh, the, the thought there was, what do we do now? We now have sequenced these genomes, at that time spent over 5 billion US dollars for the first drafts of the human and mouse genome. But now what we had discovered were over 25,000 genes down from the original estimate of about 150,000. Uh, but we only had a glimmer of what maybe 2,000 of these did. So what does one do? So Francis Collins, who at that time was the director of the Human Genome Project, assembled a group in Banbury Conference Center in New York State, where we discussed uh, what we should do with these. And a decision was reached by a group of academics, uh, some legislators, as well as people from industry, to use reverse genetics, to go from the mouse genome and exploit the exciting technology of embryonic stem cells and create a knockout for every gene in the mouse genome 
and make these freely available, not freely, but very cheaply available to academic researchers, as well as to people from industry to start exploring the genome by using reverse genetics. And I was fortunate enough to be one of the leaders of this project, and it was quite successful where we were able to, within a span of five years, using ESLs, create a library of all of these embryonic stem cells. Just five short years after that, we launched an initiative called the International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium because we realized that next tier in the pyramid moving up was gonna be far more expensive, much more labor intensive than making the ESLs. So we launched a program. Uh, a lot of this was spearheaded by Steve Brown at MRC Harwell and Alan Bradley, who was then the director of the Sanger Center to initiate the International Mouse Phenotyping Consortium of which I was asked to be the executive director. And in a space of just a couple of years, we were able to assemble a team of over 16 different research institutions and 13 companies who would take the embryonic stem cells, receive funding from their parent organizations, turn the ES cells into mice, and then study the gene function by looking at a phenotypic profile of these. So it was a very exciting program, again, uh, with a tremendous number of great collaborators throughout the world. And this was where one point where I met uh, Professor Gao, who was the leader of MARC in Nanjing, China, who later, and you'll hear more about this from Pradeep, became uh, the uh, chairman and founder of Jim Pharmatech, a sort of a spinoff of this, all of these efforts. This program was going extremely well until everything changed. Uh, we had a great collection of ESLs. We were turning them out, making mice, but it was still a slow and expensive process. And then CRISPR came out. And as you can see the quote here, uh, everything changed really fast. And in fact, it's hard to think of anything that changed faster in the field of mouse genetics than this and how CRISPR now not only sped things up, but allowed us to skip ESL work and go directly into a mouse cycle. This saved us more than two thirds of the cost of these projects and also essentially eliminated failure because virtually everything could be done using CRISPR. But CRISPR not only allowed us to do knockouts, it allowed us to do much more sophisticated things, which we always dreamed of, of engineering the genome, to humanize mice, to put in point mutations, to very efficiently put in LOXP sites where you can have a conditional knockout, again, very efficiently and much more cost effectively. And Pradeep will tell you more about that, which is the crux of today's seminar. And so just to tell you a little bit about Jim Pharmatech and the directions we're going, we invite you to visit our, our website. Uh, we are developing a vast resource of mouse models, uh, not just uh, CKO and the KO lines that you will hear more about today, but humanized lines, immunodeficient lines, as well as doing custom engineering uh, using the Cas9 CRISPR system. And of course, adding additional downstream phenotyping for which we have quite a bit of experience and preclinical studies. So this is an incredibly exciting time. And in fact, as you see, this has changed tremendously in 15 years. And in fact, just the past eight years. So where do we see this going? And I think one major level is going to be exploratory research of which we believe the KOAP mice are gonna be critical where now there's the library of not just ESLs, but mice, not just knockouts, but conditional ready for every gene in the mouse genome. This is gonna be a tremendous research tool. Moving further from the bench closer to the clinic are going to be humanized and rare disease models because these technologies have really allowed us an unparalleled access to these types of developments. The speed of discovery has been accelerated, but I think more importantly, we can now develop better mouse models that are of more true clinical relevance, whether it's gonna be compound mutations to make better models for Alzheimer's or humanization of immuno-oncology pathways for which you can test your novel therapeutic. Again, I believe this is an incredibly exciting time and as exciting as the last 20 years, which I've just blown through in about one and a half minutes, I think the next 20 years are gonna be even more important. And I think that the, the breakthrough technologies that we have and the ability to do this is just unparalleled. And it's gonna be a very exciting time to be a research scientist. So, so with that, I will stop and, and turn this over 
to Pradeep for the rest of the presentation. But throughout the presentation, feel free to send us messages with any questions and we'll try to address them either during the presentation or at the end. So again, thank you very much for joining this webinar today. Well, hope everyone can hear me and can see the screen. Hello from Wembley. I'm actually three minutes away from the stadium. It's a very happy London. It's a very happy England. Apologies for any Germans joining um, us today. Um, tough luck, that's life. Uh, we're gonna keep going, but hopefully we can cheer you up today with some knockout all project data and some exciting things uh, happening here at Gem Pharmatech and how we can contribute to everyone and to their uh, mice dreams and portfolios and how we can take along their project as well. So today's seminar, I'll probably talk about what the Knockout All project is um, and why we're doing it and how we're doing it, essential um, questions. So what is the KOP? It's, it literally stands for the Knockout All uh, Mouse project here at Gen Pharma Tech. And it's a very ambitious goal of us set a couple of years ago, where we are now trying to make conditional knockouts and knockout mice for all 22,951 protein coding genes. Uh, we think, and we know actually this is very doable. Uh, we've gone through a lot already, um, and we are hoping, well, we know we're gonna become the largest resource bank in the world soon, if not already. So I wanted to put this, um, um, kind of slide in. I've been very lucky during my postdoc to travel the world and go to different um, kind of markets, shops, shopping malls, and I have a huge sweet tooth. So I like to try all these sweets. And, and that's exactly what the KOP is about. It's that Western saying of be a kid in a sweet shop, um, that kind of mentality. If you're a researcher, if you wanna come in and say, you know what, I have this interesting set of data from uh, RNA sequencing. I've got these genes, but what can I do? Well, you can be a kid in a sweet shop and um, contact Gen Pharma Tech and say, I've got these genes, what can you do? And we'll probably say, we've got all of them on, on shelf, uh, floxed or knocked out uh, uh, for your tastes. And we can actually work with you uh, if we don't have it to make a new one as well. So is really allowing the researchers, because most of the Gen Pharma Tech family are researchers themselves, uh, to be a kid in a sweet shop. So we want to enable science to flourish and we en want to en enable you to flourish as well. Um, so we already actually enable a lot of people to flourish because if you look at our existing KOP mouse um, database um, and our customers, they've gone on to publish over 170 publications I think it might be a bit more now. Um, and these are in top journals like Cell, Science, uh, Nature, and PNAS and so forth. So our mice are available, but they're also validated and they're also published as well. So that's good to know. And that's reassuring for all of us joining us as well. So how is the KOP achieved? How do we actually do the knockout all project? So there's three actual ways. We have the spontaneous mutation, uh, just to go over the science, we have the random induced mutation and we have gene modification targeting, which you use a lot. Um, so gene modification targeting, if you split that up, you have the knockout, the KO and the CKO. Uh, you had the knock-in where we add gene and point mutation reporters. And then you have complex modifications as Mark mentioned, where you have multiple targets, humanized modifications. And then you have what the transgene Genetic TG stands for is overexpression of gene fragments by random insertions. I put this up here because um, I wanted to show you all that um, um, the Gen Pharma Tech can do all and uh, all these um, 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 gene modifications. So if you say knocking or complex modifications, we can do that as well. If you come up to us and say we want three different targets of humanized genes we can do that as well. By the way, we have a very extensive humanized portfolio in our oncology model, where, um, oncology portfolio, I should say, where we have single, double, and triple target humanized genes. But for today's talk, uh, we'll concentrate on this, which is a knockout uh, um, all kind of gene uh, modifications where we use K on condition knockouts. So if you look at the history a bit, uh, we can see that the Nobel Prize 
in 2007 was won by these French gentlemen who are actually making this gene modification in mice. Uh, and they used a very classical ES kind of technique where they culture the cell, then they used um, the modified gene vectors and so forth to inject uh, blastocytes, and then they make the mice themselves. Um, this is actually gone on over the years, and we had different genome technologies like Talon's ZFN, and lately the craze in CRISPR-Cas9. When we saw CRISPR-Cas9, um, we actually jumped on it as a company. We we're one of the first to do so. We actually used these different techniques um, in ways of, just as I mentioned, transferring and rederived mice. Uh, but we actually uh, finally settled on CRISPR-Cas9 purely because, as Mark mentioned, it has reduced timelines, as you can see here. Um, and also it allows us to have different various backgrounds um, be made as well. So it saves huge um, time for us and you, the consumer, uh, particularly in the first stage where you make these uh, constructs uh, from you know, the traditional uh, technique with four to 16 weeks, now it's two to six weeks. So that's a major leap forward. And if you look at our data in terms of mass model generation, if you look at the birth rate um, and also the germline rate as well, you can see in the uh, CRISPR-Cas9 condition knockout is 12%. Um, and also if you look at a conventional knockout, it's a 20% birth rate. And the knock-in, we actually have data as well, it's at 12%, which are very good numbers. And if you look at the germline rate itself, it's actually 2.4. 7.5 respective dense 2 percent. So we can see why we use the CRISPR-Cas9 technology and why we stuck with it to, mo to do most of our models. And what's exciting is if I want to give you an update, you know, we started only in 2019, but in 2021, our, currently our gene targeting and um, our work has now completed 10,100 uh, of these genes. Um, so that's very exciting, uh, targeted. Um, so we're going on a rapid pace. It's unbelievable what the team and technical team can do. Uh, we can generate around 5,000 or more of these mice per year, plus the other mice as well that we uh, look upon, uh, look after and also plan to do. So it's a very exciting time for us and it's gonna be exciting time for you because you have a very diverse portfolio to access. So the current status is that we just don't go by, oh, we think this is gonna sell, or we think this may be good. No, we go by what we, our customers want and we, what, we, what the demand is and what the scientists need. So if we look at our strains, we can see that so far, our knockout, our con uh, constitution knockout KO strains are numbering 8,000, conditional knockouts are around 5,000 and this, Overall, the latest figure I just pulled out from the technical team is 10,100. That might not add up, but this is what we're having so far as of yesterday. So that's quite nice to uh, know. And we actually um, target everything and anything. So as we can see here, GPCR receptors are quite high up, but we can also go through the cyclins. We can also target ion channels. We can even ask if you come to us and say, you know what, we want this. We can also do that for you as well in terms of any uh, organelle or any cell parts or anything you need. And talking about current status, you can see here, if you look at um, intercellular components, so far we actually targeted a wide range. This is actually based on customer demand and want. And um, so if you need um, nucleus type proteins be knocked out or gene, func uh, gene function studies to be done, we've got nearly 5,000 of those. And we could also go with super smooth endoplastic reflectolum or mitochondria knockout. So really you're that kid in that uh, sweet shop, the world's your oyster and you can actually tell us what you need and we'll probably have it or you can actually um, demand and reserve. And to look uh, at, the, at our portfolio even further and look about fields. So we looked at cellular components, but if you look at physiological um, fields, we can see that uh, by far we have a huge portfolio in the immune system, um, which is, we do very well in. Uh, we have uh, a lot of expertise in our technical team for the immune system, but that doesn't stop us as well. 
So we can also uh, go into very unique niches like the hearing auditory niches where we have uh, actually quite unique demands. So that's quite uh, good to know that we actually go into niches that others don't even touch, uh, but we actually go and help our researchers. Uh, we also have a huge portfolio in aging as well. And we have the capability of actually making these clinician knockouts and aging them as well. So that's something for you guys to remember as well. Again, uh, some other things to highlight. We look at the cardiovascular system as well, uh, which is quite uh, productive for us, and also the neurological system. So field-wise, uh, we have no limits. Just come and talk to us, and probably we will help you. So we want to talk now about how we covered what and how the knockout or project is, but how can you get involved? How can you make orders? So if you go to genpharmatech.com, our website is just like a normal shopping uh, kind of website where you have the shopping cart, you can actually search the model or the item you're interested in, and it gives you a very extensive availability list, uh, detailed strategy on what we do and, um, and what we offer. And you can I just add to cart and inquire and then one of our sales teams across the world will get back to you very uh, in a very quick time. And one of the cool things about this website, what I really enjoyed when I first started working here is that you can actually break this down in terms of um, your specialty, your pathways that you're looking at or your research niche. So you can um, really look at the different uh, ways and how you can uh, get these knockout mice. For example, if you click on AMPK pathway, uh, it uh, kind of gives you all the signaling pathways associated with AMPK, and you can actually click on the protein in the pathway, and then it will bring out these the available knockout mice. So quite cool, quite interactive uh, function of the website, and it's quite convenient as well for researchers to look into what's available and how how quickly they can obtain it. We also don't just stop by giving you uh, the mice details and what's available and we don't like wash our hands. We actually have very good pre and post um, sales uh, teams and functions um, and also support. Uh, if you look at uh, pre-sales, we actually give a very a comprehensive software for strategy design. If you don't have a strategy, we can design it for you. And if we have the mice, we actually provide you all the uh, schematic diagrams and strategies and how we actually make these mice and what the uh, modifications are. We don't stop there. We also do sequencing for you. We actually look at things like the SD, RNA, primer details and donor sequencing as well. So we're quite comprehensive in what we um, show our research, uh, researchers. Uh, and also here's a, a kind of a cool um, optimization slide here that shows us how comprehensive and how thorough we are in terms of what we do uh, from ev ev from the start, from removing sticky ends of the PCR all the way to checking default phosphorylation, uh, your uh, DTA, double oligo, and also looking at even your SSDNA. Um, so we do all these things uh, very comprehensively and we validate uh, uh, pre and post for you. And again, there's another QC standard optimization where you can see how we look at tandem repeats ratios and you can see how far the uh, drop. And we also look at first pass yield and we look at uh, the flooring rate and also the positive rate as well. So again, it's nothing that we do randomly. We actually take our time, validate these mice. We talk to our customers. Uh, we have their demands as well. And we actually um, give what the, you guys want, and we actually uh, validate very thoroughly before we give it out to customers. Um, those are the knockout mice, but you, with any conditional knockouts, uh, you need cream mice, and we have you, you covered on that as well. We have a very extensive pre library that stretches from the immune system to the nervous system to the bone and muscle, a very unique niches. Our Cree strains now from last October starts just below 200, but I have been informed they're much more now. We also have Crees that we, we need researchers to validate and help us on. So please, if you have a Cree in mind, or if you think we know a Cree that we have and you want to work with us, please tell us 
uh, and we're more than happy for you to validate it. Um, and it'd be great if you can take a conditional knockout as well from us and validate that as well with the CRE. And finally, I don't want to leave you just saying that we are knockout or conditional knockout uh, uh, company. As I mentioned to you, we have a huge immuno-oncology uh, portfolio and standing, especially in the humanized and immune checkpoint areas. So you can see here that we are actually world-class and we're cut above the rest in terms of how we make our targets. We have single target, double target, triple target mice on dual backgrounds. So if someone wants to view, look at human PD-1 and human PD-1 ligand, we have that as well. If you take it further and look at those two genes and humanized version with a, a CTLA-4, we have that as well. So a very unique capability in all facets of mouse uh, uh, research and preclinical research only here at Gen Pharmatech. Um, that doesn't stop us there. We have a, a microbiome portfolio. We have a portfolio where we do preclinical studies, your pharmacokinetic studies, and we have disease models ranging from diabetes to cardiovascular to immuno-oncology. We, we can even do osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, bone disease. So there's no limits. Uh, uh, we hope uh, you can come to us and we hope you can be that kid in that sweet shop mentality saying, you know what, I want this mice, I want to do this, I'm not sure, well, you can, because you can say, now you can say, I can go to Gen Pharmatech. And we really want you to do your science, dream big, get whatever you want, come to us, and we'll provide it for you. Um, so be that kid in that sweet shop, and hopefully we, we can uh, communicate soon. So thank you very much for your uh, participation. Uh, if you want to contact us, we are in the US and EU and also Asia as well. I'm going to leave this slide up so you can contact us. And please do email us uh, at globalservice at gempharmatech.com. So thank you very much for your time. And we'll probably take some questions now. Great. Thank you so much, Pradeep. I love to be the kid in that sweet shop all over the world um, to save uh, my trips. Um, so, uh, as people who joined us before, we have been running the KYP um, in January this year, and this time around, Pradeep actually brought us more information and uh, uh, the updates uh, that took place in the past uh, several months. So, as we wait for um, questions from this audience to come in, uh, I do want to share one question that we have been receiving a lot from our um, customers regarding the KIP portfolio uh, just to start the Q&A uh, session. So this is a particular question regarding quality controls that um, we do we do on the mutant lines that we create uh, through the KOAP project. Um, so uh, can you comment on the quality controls that we do on the KO or CKO, CKO mouse that we create? Um, I think I can open this up to both um, Pradeep and Mark, if you want to chime in. So, yeah, sure. We're very thorough in the quality control we do. As I showed you, we look at the SSA DNA. Uh, we look at uh, repeats. We also do the validation in qPCR. Um, so we don't give things out uh, very easily, and we do thorough validation. And also if the customer wants other things done like sequencing, we can do that as well. So validations is a key to us and we'll do that very thoroughly. Great, thanks. Um, I got one question. I think it's um, um, a great question. Uh, thank you for the uh, person who asked. So it's a question from Mark uh, and um, it says, as a CEO of a company providing mice for research, where do you see the mouse business will go in the next few years? How would you like Gem Pharmatech to participate in this activity? Uh, well, thanks very much for that question. It's a great question. And as I say, I think that's why I'm more excited about the utility of mouse research now, even than when I started this more than 20 years ago. Uh, the dream was, and uh, Oliver Smithies really was essential in starting this. And Pradeep showed a photo of Oliver who no longer is with us, but an amazing, engaging scientist who sort of hit his third stride in his 70s and won a Nobel Prize. 
And Oliver's vision really was going back was the modification, early stages of gene therapy, long before anyone thought about it, and being able to do the genetic modification in cell lines originally to study cancer, and then on to do those modifications in mice. And now that technology is there where we can really make any type of point mutation, humanization that we always dreamed of. And we don't have to just have random transgenesis. We can put genes into a safe harbor locus so we have consistent expression and we can swap, mix and match the vast number of different human disease alleles that are coming out. So as I said, this is an exciting time to be a scientist and the mice have been of never greater utility. And as you saw on the immuno-oncology where we have double, triple mutants, uh, it's really, we're only limited by our imagination of making better and better mouse models in almost any disease area that you're studying. All right. Um, I see that we are almost near the end of the webinar. Uh, there's, I'll put, post this last question. Um, it, could you share some technical details about how you produce CKO by CRISPR? Do you have- I, I, I can answer that because it's one of the few technical questions I can still answer these days. So uh, yes, th thanks for that question is that the vast majority of the CKOs, similar to what we did with the Knockout Mouse Project, we choose a critical exon, or if we can't identify a critical exon because the gene is so novel, we knock out multiple exons. And in these cases too, we insert two at two different sites, the LOXP sites. So we're not making a very long site, which might be difficult to get homologous recombination, but making two small insertions uh, where they would be necessary. And that's important because in some cases, it might be a single exon that's relatively close together, but we have some that might be you know, 10, 10 kilobases away. So that would be much more difficult with homologous recombination. So we make two inserts of the lock P site. Mm -hmm. So the, the question actually continues. It says, do you use single-stranded or double-stranded guide? In most cases, we're using single-stranded guides. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how do you select your uh, guide RNAs? As everyone says, we have a computer. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Well, we are on the, on the hour for this uh, webinar. Thank you so much for all the participants and also our speakers. And uh, hope to see you next time and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining.